is really being able to see the forest through the trees. Ooh. I'm always able to really see the big picture and see a lot of different perspectives. And I'm never like super extreme opinionated on one way or the other. Um, because I can see the whole big picture and see how the different components can fit together. That helps a lot in my job, right? Of what I do Um, because I'm able to see how things work with my clients. But yeah, that's a big gift that I have. It can also be a hindrance, which I think a lot of people's gifts can be blessings and curses because Mm -hmm. sometimes I can struggle to make a decision whenever decisions are really necessary. And sometimes that like, indecision can cause so much undue stress and anxiety because you're just like spinning or even once you think you've decided you haven't actually decided if you're still considering other options have you ever thought about it like that like you think you're decided and then you're like still questioning <laughs> Kylie you like guilty <laughs> I'm still questioning like, wait is this the right decision should I have done this or should I have done that like that means you haven't fully decided and committed to what you're like moving forward with and I'm guilty of it too um but yeah that's one gift that I have for sure what are y'all's gifts yeah what's yours Kylie I mean I could I have a list of what I think Kylie but I want to hear it from you (laughs) um that was so nice oh man end scene we're done here guys (laughs) um hmm. I think I think and I'm I'm on certain days, Brian might really disagree, but for the most part, <laughs> I I think that I have a pretty good ability to hold space for people and oh, to mm-hmm. let them Love that. be heard and seen oh, yes. and validated. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't necessarily mean in like a, oh, everybody gets a trophy sort of way. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm kind of like a, hey, the way you're feeling, your experience matters like mm-hmm. it's time to move on though. Let's go, you know, uh, and holding that. that whole, the space through all of that. I, I do find that Katie, to your point, uh, mm-hmm. this is not always a good thing. You know, you don't always need to hear everybody's <laughs> sob story <laughs> and like, stranger on the street while you're paused at a red light and they're I'm like asking for, for money. <laughs> like, oh, exactly. My, my mom is, my, everybody in my life has, has said Stop talking to people, Kylie. Just walk. <laughs> walk. And don't say hello to the strangers. They don't care. They do, though. They do care. I care. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, but then, you know, you get emotionally invested in this. Like, James, mm-hmm. who sits on the corner over here, haven't seen him in a couple weeks. Wonder where oh, he's no. at. Hope he's okay. Where is James? Where is James? Guys, James? guys we got to find James, everybody. We <laughs> have to James. find him. What His little chair. I don't know. Oh. Sits oh. under the tree when it gets too hot, you guys. There's more shade. Oh, mm. oh, shade. James. He sounds adorable. Oh I think God. he might be a drug dealer, but that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> that is not the point. It is not the point. James, He's lovely. there's space for James. Okay? Space. We were holding... <laughs> if I James could trust you where you've been, I would hug you. But I'm not yeah. sure there yet, sir. Oh. <laughs> Meg, oh what do you God. think yours is? I think I'm like the world's greatest cheerleader. <laughs> That's oh, what I, I would say. Absolutely. That's an important <laughs> absolutely. skill to have as a dietitian. <laughs> as I a human really being. Am. Yeah. Oh, I really am. And it's so funny because my husband is one who like hates the cheerleading type of support, you know, like he does the <laughs> littlest thing and I'll be like, wow, that's so wonderful. Oh my God. Like you're amazing. And he'll be like, please do not chastise me. You know? <laughs> And I'm like, that's quite I'm enough. I really mean it. I'm like, okay. it, I'm like from the bottom of my soul, I am truly impressed by this. And it's like the oh. most mundane thing, but I am so impressed by it. And he like, honestly doesn't believe that I'm truly impressed. Oh, oh, <laughs> you're right, Meg. Listen, yeah. I love that all three of us were able to answer that question. There are, I that is that a too. reflection of some self-work seriously, because there are a lot of people, I mean, People listening, what is your gift? We're going to get into yeah. it a little bit, but like, yep. think about mm-hmm. that for yourself or maybe have somebody else answer it for you. Like that's a great Meg and Katie, I could answer that for both of you. Right. right. What do other yeah. people see as your mm-hmm. gift? But yeah, which I think is a very good segue 
Most right, definitely. Meg? Oh, yeah. To our, gosh, I don't even want to call her a guest. I mean, she is, but she is a dear friend. Another one of those people that neither of us have met at all <laughs> in <Yeah>. real life. <laughs> but I feel like deeply connected. So anyway, this is our friend, Katie. Katie, mm -hmm. welcome. Please share with our audience who you are and what we're going to chat about. Yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, kind of crazy that we haven't met in person. I feel like we have been long lost friends for a very long time. Okay. But um, the way that yeah. Kylie put it is soul friends, long lost soul friends. And that just <laughs> feels it. so juicy. And I love I it. Know, anyway. I know. I love it. Go on, soul um, friend. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm a fellow dietitian. I live in the great state of Texas. Yeehaw. Mm -hmm. And I. <laughs> Oh, thank you to that. <laughs> That's going to stick um, with me for a while, and I enjoyed it very funny. much. One summer, I, I spent the summer in Barcelona one year in college, and whenever I would tell people that I was from Texas, like in Barcelona, it was always so funny, like hearing their like reactions to Texas, or even <laughs> just like, oh, I'm from the United States, and they'd be like, from Texas? Oh. Like. <laughs> 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 oh, it that's funny. Hot, hot, hot out here this summer, though. So I kind of wish oh. I didn't live here right now. We've had like oh. 100 degrees every day for months now. Um, so oh. it's just kind of brutal. But um, I have, so live in Texas, three kids, a husband, a fluffy puppy, a fish named mm. Arlo. We've got the whole menagerie here. <laughs> Arlo the fish. We had oh four God. shrimp, but I think Arlo ate the shrimp. So we're down to just one fish now. Arlo <laughs> ate the shrimp? Arlo ate what? the shrimp. What? Wait, wait. This is I, a children's I, book in the making. Arlo the fish. <laughs> I am not up to date. I don't know. I don't know the depths of like fish care, but like, are we talking like <laughs> shrimp, shrimp? Like shrimp? They're like little shrimp. They're probably like an inch long. And my husband, so this is like my husband, Joe, and my oldest daughter charlotte's thing like she when she turned six last year begged us for a fish and i think joe really kind of wanted a fish so he told her yes <laughs> as like a disguise and so charlotte gets a, a fish a beta fish for her sixth birthday Those and are so, so pretty like guess who gets to do all the beta care it's mom right <laughs> and so, yeah. like, mm -hmm. i finally a few weeks ago i was like okay i'm done like <laughs> You guys can know Arlo's tank like this is your project. <laughs> and then the next thing I know, Joe's reading up on beta friends and um, they have to live by themselves because they're carnivores and they attack. But he was like, no, right. like you can get catfish or shrimp or snails to live with a beta fish <laughs> and it'll be fine. And he was like, as long oh, as it's no. not a red shrimp, because then the beta thinks it's like a fellow beta and it'll attack. So they got oh, two no. ghost shrimp that were like clear and two blue velvet shrimp that are like navy blue and they're all gone. Like those Arlo shrimp, had a delicious those, dinner, <laughs> shrimp dinner, those, shrimp cocktail. <laughs> those shrimp found out. They found yeah. out. They it fucked around true. and they found out. Oh my Wait, God. I don't know. Of all the choices. So I know. <laughs> Where does somebody buy pet shrimp? I think at the pet store. I don't know. Like they left to go get Texas something and came back some... with shrimp. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, is that a Texas thing? Because I'm I don't thinking know. when you said shrimp, I'm like, like shrimp cocktail. Like, are we talking? Yeah. Is that the kind of shrimp that we're talking <laughs> The and, beta fish and, just produced massive teeth and went to town. I that mean, was the second crazy. part yeah. of my question. I was like, Next face. I've never <laughs> seen this face on you ever in my life. This is it's the appalled. face of sheer. I'm I'm I am confused and appalled at the same time. Yeah. I, so whoa. husband doesn't get to pack, pick the pets anymore because <laughs> <laughs> this is what we get. Amazing. Oh my God. Oh, so, oh boy. Yeah. I have, you know, the menagerie here and I'm in private practice as well. And I focus in functional gut health. So people with chronic gut symptoms, diagnosed IBS, undiagnosed IBS, just kind of the symptoms, um, bloating, all that kind of stuff is, is my jam. So oh my gosh. just like Kylie. Yay. I know <laughs> we've had a we love you. <laughs> we have had a lot of gut specialists and gut stuff on yeah. the show. And I think it's not an accident in that it's just, 
I mean, you guys know gut stuff affects what is it more? Are women more prone to gut it's stuff? Like, yeah, it's like 70% something of crazy. people with IBS yeah. are women, something like mm-hmm. that, 70, 80%. <clears throat> yeah, but we're talking about something slightly different today as in the realm of gut stuff. Yeah, so this is going to be more about really the way you think about your life and how you are living your life intentionally and by design or by default and honestly letting your IBS completely get in the way of how you're showing up. And when you're a little old granny on your deathbed surrounded (laughs) by your friends and family and you think back on this legacy that you're going to be leaving behind, what kind of legacy are you leaving? You know, are you somebody who's like, as I think it's Earl Nightingale says, like tiptoed quietly through life, trying not to be noticed and, um, you know, trying not to lose things um, or, you know, miss out on things? Or have you been somebody who's going through your life, making bold, big impacts on others, showing up, using your gifts, like we were talking about at the beginning of the show, and making a huge impact and legacy on others. And it's something that is easy to not even think about, right? Like we're just so caught up in the rush of working our jobs, paying our bills, you know, letting these distractions dictate how we're spending our time and energy. And then when you add in IBS or these chronic gut symptoms that cause a lot of pain and you're stuck in this, what I call hot mess gut survival (laughs) mode, where you're just like doing the best you can to get by. I mean, goodness, you're just tiptoeing through life, hoping you're not having to spend your whole day in the bathroom, right? Like much Mm -hmm. less thinking about Mm -hmm. this big, bold impact you can make. And so it's just, yeah, that's kind of what we're bringing today. I'm excited. I'm so here for it. I'm ready. This topic of legacy, looking back on your life and being proud of it, et cetera, is oh, juicy. It's so juicy and it's so emotional. Even just like I knew what you were going to say here, right? Like guys, we knew what she was going to talk about, but (laughs) (laughs) did we? (laughs) Uh, Not so sure. (laughs) Different call And and even, even still hearing you say it, I was just Oh, you just, it was just said in a way that kind of makes you really think. So I want to maybe preface this chat for everybody. Like this is going to be an introspective part. There's going to be an introspective part of this conversation and Mm -hmm. it might make you feel, it just might make you feel a little bit, but I would say, please don't shy away from that. Like that's the point. That's the point of this. And the awareness, we had another guest, I think it was Krista who said the awareness of what you've got going on is the most important thing. You aren't going to be able to do any of the things that Katie is going to be sharing with us and talking about if you aren't first aware. And most of the time that awareness comes with a lot of discomfort. So Mm -hmm. aside from all of that being totally its own beast, Katie, you're talking about people really, really being impacted specifically by any sort of GI issue, complication, IBS, or otherwise, and allowing that to be the thing that they hide behind, allowing that to be the thing that holds them back. And if it's okay, Meg, can we just dive in? I want to hear, yeah, I want to hear, because I know you work with your clients on this. One, why don't we start with what does that often look like? So you have somebody in front of you and they're talking about IBS, but you're hearing other parts of the story as well. And this, this idea that "Mm, this is not just about the gut starts to come together. I want you to sort of try to paint a picture for us so that people who are listening can see themselves. Where can they see pieces that you see in your clients in themselves? Mm, I love that. And I want to first start by kind of revisiting something that you said about people getting emotional. And that's amazing because we know that in order to be successful at any goal, you have to have an emotional attachment to it. You have to really want it. You have to really be excited and passionate about your goal. And if you're not like you're not going to be successful. That's why everyone fails, right? With their new year's Mm -hmm. like diet things is because they're not really that invested. They feel like it's something they should be doing versus something that they really want to be doing. 
And so if you have IBS or gut symptoms or whatever, you know, gut, gut discomfort you have, if it's something you feel like you should manage better, but it's not something that you really care that much about or that affected by or that worked up about, you're not going to be willing to show up when you don't feel like showing up. Um, and so it's great to get a little bit emotional and passionate about your goal. Um, but yeah, so some examples of people using IBS to hide behind. And let me just say, this is not intentional ever. And it's you're not even aware of it. Like you said, Kylie, like just becoming aware of these things is so important. Nobody's even aware that they're doing this, right? You're just going through the motions, coping the best that you can. But in the process, this happens. So some examples are, um, and it's never just about the gut, right? It's never just about having perfect bowel movements, no gas, a perfectly flat tummy. Because if it were, I wouldn't be doing what I do. Like, <laughs> Like, right, we're here to change some lives and to make an impact ourselves on other people for the better. And so it's not just about the gut. Um, it's, about, <laughs> it's about, you know, having that impact. So one example, a client that comes to mind that I love talking about um, it, with her experience when she first came to me, when we first started working together, um, she's probably in her 50s. And she said she's been at the same job for probably 20 or 30 years. And she said, <clears throat> I've been here for a really long time. I'm really loyal to the company. The company is really loyal to me and they work with me and they understand that I can never take on too much responsibility and they can't ever ask too much of me because I'm not well. And so mm. she, well, yeah, Ooh. yeah. And so not only that, but then when she went to this job where she knew she wasn't making an impact, right? She specifically is not making an impact because she's only doing the bare minimum that she's able to do to get her basic needs met. Then she was going home and collapsing into her bed every day at the end of her day, exhausted, and would just take a nap until her husband came home with takeout. And then, you know, she kind of forced herself up. They'd go sit in the living room in front of the TV, eat, and then she'd basically stay on the couch and watch TV until she went to bed or fall asleep on the couch. Like, that is not living. That is not wow. living, right? That That's surviving. Not... That's just surviving. And barely. so barely surviving. And she was aware she wasn't intentionally doing those things. She was just trying to get by. And so that's a way um, that it can really, that story just really sticks with me. And I have several very similar, but that's probably the most extreme that I've wow. worked with. Um, I have another one where she almost didn't leave her house ever because she was having um, like diarrhea 14 times a day. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we were able to end up figuring that out. Like these clients both had really happy, amazing transformation. So the first one mm -hmm. I was telling you about, um, by the end of our time together, and um, we worked together for about six months, she accepted a new job with no. like more responsibility. So she was then like Yay! over, she, so she was at one of the clients, like one of her old jobs clients supervising her previous role as well as other people like and cooking dinner and like totally being a role model and setting an example for her family on how to prepare healthy food and like going on trips and it was a total turnaround that that's the spoiler alert that we needed yep. that's yeah, yeah I was exactly. like I feel like this yep. story was so sad I needed to share that on the <laughs> not just like paint this really sad picture and that also just shares hope that even if you're just barely surviving like it can change. Like there are answers out there. You can get better and all of that. And then also I think it's about even in the moment, whenever you're not better yet, not delaying that impact, that purpose, that vision mm -hmm. until you're better. But it's really about understanding your unique gifts and abilities and painting that vision of how you can impact people today using those gifts and abilities where you're at. So I think the the visual there, Katie, thank you, was really good because, right, this might not be a job. It might be something else for somebody in their life, but everybody is going to know if you're being really honest with yourselves, right? 
you know where you're hiding and Mm -hmm. you know why on some level, Mm -hmm. you know where you're being small and you know what, it might be okay to be small, right? Let's clarify that, right? Yeah. You might choose to not want to do something and that's totally different. Yeah. That's not the same thing. This is what you're saying, Katie, is this sort of like unconscious detachment from the most vibrant version of your life. And that I think is what we're going to get into here now. Right. And, and I, you kind of started talking about a way forward with that, which is exactly what we want. We want to be able to have somebody turn this off and say, okay, this is what I'm going to go and do. So connect the dots for us a little bit between a person hiding behind their IBS or other gut symptoms or whatever, whatever that yeah, physical it's not just unwellness. Gut stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It could be anything. Skin. Mm-hmm. Combination mm-hmm. of things too. Oh, oh my yeah. God. All of it. Right. Yeah. Meg, I know mm-hmm. you see that. Oh, yeah. right. Oh my yes. gosh. Oh, I'm wow. sure. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. So can that was the dots my dream. Between... Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. all Meg needed was a couple heels classes. To get out of that. <laughs> She's all set now. <laughs> Throw me a pair of heels and a pole and I am there. We're good. <laughs> She's fine. <laughs> Fully That's seen. for each of you to explore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Katie, I want to connect the dots uh, between a person being in that place and how they can get to the next stone, so to speak, by thinking about what their gifts are and using it. So connect to that story for us. Yeah. And I love that you said it as a stone. So I'm thinking like there's this nice broad river with little stepping stones across. Right. And so first you have to know, let's just like go with this analogy. I'm loving it. Like it just all like came to me super fast. So we're just going to rock it. So if you're standing on the river bank, uh-huh. this is know... late, but the pun, like let's rock it. <laughs> I, <come laughs> out. I didn't even get that. I had to unmute myself. That's why I, po- I popped in a little delayed oh there, gosh. but um, I need, I could not let that one slide. So continue. Low hanging fruit. <laughs> Couldn't do it. I understand. Um, okay. So first, before you can cross the river, you have to know what your skills are, right? You have to know what your unique gifts are. How far can you right. jump? Are you a good climber? Are you a good swimmer? If you fall in, like you got to know what your skills are. And then you've got to know where you're going. Like you have to know that you even want to cross the river, right? And then each stepping stone comes one at a time and you can see them all lined out in front of you, but you can only take the next step in front of you at a time. And maybe sometimes, you know, the current is kind of swelling further down the river and you lose sight of those stones or you weren't able to see them, but then you get to them and you're able to see them a little more clearly. And so I think that that's a really beautiful analogy with gut health first um, or also, but first you have to decide you want to cross the river, right? Like what's on the other side that you want to get to and like knowing, okay, there's no boat that's going to come ferry me across with your IBS or your gut health symptoms. Like no one is going to come rescue me. Like I have Whoa. to take responsibility for this and I have to cross the river myself. I have to like, yes, I can get help, you know, like I can get help along the way and support along the way, but I have to go do the work. And so that's the first step. And then understanding your unique skills and abilities and gifts that you have that you want to share with the world and then creating the vision for your life. So like we are talking about that legacy whenever you're old and gray and like what kind of impact do you want to have had? How are you going to do that? You know, for all of us here, our life vision in our careers is through our nutrition work, right? And having a really profound impact on the world through that. For other people, it may be through motherhood or through just being a really amazing volunteer or, you know, it doesn't have to look, you know, it's going to look different for everyone. And it can be multiple assets like, or um, multiple ways. Like I do volunteer in our community. I am a mom. I do have my work as well. And so it's using those gifts to create the vision that you want And then taking what I call short-sighted action, not getting stuck in the research mode of like, what's the perfect protocol? What's, who's the perfect expert? What's the perfect book? Like you're going to get stuck there spinning 
And uh, it's called what, what I call the root cause researcher, right? You're looking for the root cause, but you're not actually taking action on any of it. You're just doing passive research action. Um, and you're still waiting for that, for that expert, that protocol to rescue you, right? So you're looking for the right one, waiting for it to show up. And you have to just take some short-sighted action. And it may be imperfect. It may be the wrong action. It may be the wrong stepping stone to step onto that's going to take you in a different direction. But the things you learn through that short-sighted action will reveal the next step to you as you continue to move forward. Wow. So let me ask you a question because I think what you've said here is so powerful, but I also could totally see that there may be some people listening who might feel very frustrated by that and might be saying to themselves, but, but wait, like how, how, how can I figure this out on my own? I'm not the expert. I don't know the protocols. I don't have the training. So can you describe to us a, what you would say to anyone who might be thinking that and B maybe paint the picture for us of what it could look like for somebody who is able to both take the action that you're describing and also accept the support of, yeah. of that that's practitioner helpful. without like waiting for them to save them. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I think that that's the big difference is accepting help and support for someone who can meet your needs versus waiting for that person to come rescue you or do the work for you or save you or heal your gut for you. And I think it goes back to understanding what your gifts and abilities are and where you need support. So really asking yourself those questions what do I need support with? Is it truly just knowing what to do? Okay, in what space? You know, I have gut issues, I have IBS. So I'm going to look for an IBS expert and using your discernment to understand, is it someone who just has excellent marketing skills and sales skills that I'm getting sold on and kind of sucked in and they actually are kind of empty beneath the surface and don't deliver on their promises? Or is it we've somebody? All been there. <laughs> we've all been yeah, there. Gotta yeah. Do, gotta do the vibe check, guys, yeah, on your practitioners. Vibe <laughs> check. And using discernment, like what is their actual experience? Where did they do their training? Are other people recommending them? If they're saying they've helped thousands of people, where are these thousands of testimonials backing that up and, and you know, supporting that? And then just making sure that they're in alignment and agreement with your values and your vision and can support you in the way you need to be supported. So that is taking responsibility for your health is using discernment to find the right support for yourself instead of like reaching out to the first person you come to or the person who has the best sales skills or marketing strategy And maybe you're not a good fit, you know, that's kind of your job to vet that person and see if you're a good fit. And anyone who's good is going to be vetting you too, right? But it really takes both to to make that decision. I love that you made that clarification. I think it's so helpful because I think at least even me, when I was listening to your under, to your explanation at first, I was like, but wait, I'm also confused about this too. So I'm really happy that like, that clarification was really helpful for me and I'm sure helpful for people listening too. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. We don't want anyone confused. (laughs) (laughs) I want to say, this is feeling important to say, this is complicated work. Let's really just clarify that for everybody. I feel overwhelmed even, and I know exactly what you're saying and have done what you're doing or what you're saying, Katie. And I think it's really important. What we're really, what you're saying here is two things. You need to have a why. You need to have a reason to want to get yourself out of an unfavorable situation. You need to have a reason because if you don't, and I think what you're saying, tell me if I'm wrong here, is that you can find your why, you can find your reason, by looking at the things that you know you bring into this world. Ask the people around you, what is, what is the thing that I offer you? Why are you with me in this, in this world? So there's that, right? That's one thing. And also understanding how to put words to what it is that you need. Mm. If everybody was able to ask for what they needed at all times, there would be no therapists, there would be no divorce <laughs> rates, there would be there would be nothing. I mean, it is yeah. a really hard thing 
to one, know what it is that you need help with, one, be okay asking for help, and then two, put words to it for another person where they will understand and be able to offer you the correct type of help, which I think Mm -hmm. is where so many of us run into a very challenging position with different providers. It's not anybody's fault. It's that there's no clarity on what they're capable of providing versus what it is you're asking for. Yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of that confusion happens, um, especially in mainstream medicine or conventional medicine. The doctors are seeing 35 to 40 patients a day. I have one of my best friends is a colorectal surgeon and she is like, I should have time. Like I'm seeing 35 to 40 patients a day. And like, I care about these people, but I can't sit there and hold space for them as Kylie was talking about earlier. And so because of that lack of time, Um, or personality differences, or training, whatever, it could be a number of reasons. The question is never asked what your goal is. And so somebody goes to a provider and says, I have IBS, that provider is going to assume, make a lot of assumptions about what that person then wants help with. And so I think it's really important that you go to a provider who's asking you questions and making you think. And that's some of the work that's involved, right? Is thinking through those things. And sometimes it's not fun. And sometimes you can shut down or feel overwhelmed because it's not easy, right? But you, and if you find yourself, you may find yourself too saying, I don't know a lot, right? I don't know. I don't know. And that's like a barrier, right? That's a protective barrier that your subconscious is throwing up because you don't want to dig deeper for whatever reason. And so really Mm -hmm. challenge yourself. Don't let myself say, I don't know when I'm asking myself these questions, really force myself to ask, but what if I did? Like, what would that look like if I did know, you know, Mm -hmm. and be gentle with yourself and take it in small steps at a time. I think the, I don't know can always be an invitation to like, okay, this is a thing that I need to look at. Because Mm -hmm. clearly somebody is asking me, so I Mm -hmm. do need to know for myself so that I can communicate that and get the type of help that I'm looking for and avoid what you're saying here, Katie, this like researcher paralysis where you Mm -hmm. can't do anything because you don't really know what you need, right? That idea of identifying where you are now, like, you know, you want to get across the river, but you don't know where you're starting to know if there's a stone or a bridge or a dam Love or that. a shark, right? Like a shark. A shark. A shark. A shark. Okay. Please say shark. Well, you know what well, I mean. Arlo, Arlo the beta fish. Papa yeah. Rana. Maybe oh, Arlo is there. <laughs> Arlo can't be trusted. Kylie, but I I'm, think that's important. I'm concerned. What rivers are you hanging out at? Do we need, <laughs> you do know. We need help? <laughs> <laughs> DC can't be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what would you say, Katie, to somebody who, if their answer is, I just want to feel better, like, can you guide us through, let's say you were sitting with a client or a potential client and you asked them that question, like, what is your goal? And they were like, I just want to feel better. So it's not quite yeah. an, I don't know, but it's still very vague, very vague. I would imagine. So and like, that's what- where almost everyone starts out, I think. Right. Yeah. I'm sure you guys hear that too. Yeah. I just want to be better. I just want to feel better. I want my IBS mm-hmm. to be better. Um, what does better look like for you is a great mm-hmm. question to ask. Mm-hmm. And then why Kylie just said, you need a why ask why I've heard a really, like one of my coaches has said, ask why seven times. And it can feel like kind of ridiculous, but it's like, why? So that my stomach stops hurting. Why? So that I'm not riding around in bed in pain all day. Why? So that I can go do other things. Why? You know, so that I can. (laughs) Wow. This is amazing. Yeah. 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 So really forcing yourself to ask why until you feel like you've gotten to the real root, because that root why may be so that I can model to my kids what a vibrant life looks like so that then they grow up as adults and have this standard of this vibrant, impactful life, you know, that they're going to go make them instead of seeing their mom sick in bed all day, every day. But whenever you say, I want to feel better, you're never going to get that right. Without asking those other questions. Right. Why? It's so simple. It's like a four, it's like a four-year-old. Katie, Mm -hmm. kids are little. Do they ask why why? all the time? (laughs) Why? Why? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, all the time. <laughs> so that's really then, great. That's a first step for everybody. 
Why yeah, do you yeah. want to feel better? What is yep. it that you want to feel and why? Times seven. Great. Yeah. Step one. Ask why. Love it. Step one. Okay. One. Keep Perfect. going. I know you've got more in there. I think I interrupted you or Meg. Maybe I no. interrupted you. Go no. For it. Oh, I, think that was it. I wanted to uh, have Katie connect the dots for us one, once again on going back. So you have this client or this prospective client that has told you, I just want to feel better. And now you've walked them through They've asked themselves why seven times and they have gotten to that point where you said, I want to model for my children what a vibrant life looks like. And I would love for you to tie this into what you were saying in the beginning about taking action. So what does a person do in this situation from this point so that they are doing what you're suggesting and taking responsibility, taking actionable responsibility? Like what could that look like for this pretend perspective client. yeah I What's think name that it or Jacob what was what was the homeless man's name <laughs> Jay James James be respectful James. okay <laughs> James <laughs> James has no idea who I am but I say hi to him every time I see him okay hi, James. all right so I'm that young lady okay oh <laughs> what a sweetheart all right so um let's call this person James <laughs> what is what's James to do <laughs> So yeah, James, it goes back to the gifts, right? Like what, what are your skills? What do you know? What do you not know? You know, say I know, like maybe I took an introductory nutrition course in college for my like science elective. And so I know the basic macronutrients of nutrition. Like I know the basics, like what a healthy meal is. And I know I have not been eating that for myself. I have that skill set to then go do that and make that change on my own and mm-hmm. see where I'm at, see what improvements there are, see where I still need help. And, you know, if you're going and you're like, I know what I should be eating, but I'm not making that happen. And I can't seem to make progress there. And I've been trying and I've tried a few different things. Maybe it's time to get some help, you know, from an expert who can help you to, get the discipline and motivation and figure out why you're not able to do what you decided you wanted to do. Right. Um, Because that's at the core of everything, right? Like if you can't show up and do what you say you're going to do, no matter what that action is, you're not going to achieve your goal. So Mm -hmm. that would be a great step. And even asking yourself that, you know, of why am I not doing this? What's missing here? Um, And that's something that maybe you need someone to help you tease that out. Maybe you're kind of stuck and hitting up against a wall. Or maybe once you sit down and think, you can think of a few different solutions. Like, you know, I need to plan out my meals on Sunday and sit down and carve out 30 minutes of time. So I have a plan. So I'm not just flying by the seat of my pants every day of the week. Um, Stuff like that. So what are my skills? What are my gaps? And um, then in those gaps, that's when you go in and get some help and some support because you're not, like you said, Beg, like people aren't experts in this, right? Mm -hmm. Like they can't be an expert. We're not expecting you to be a gut health expert. Like that's our job. And so Mm -hmm. that's where you can hold space for the expert to come alongside you and hold your hand. But just by doing this foundational work and knowing your why and knowing your passion and having an idea of this vision, like that gives us so much more to work with. Um, and, and we can support you so much more deeply and you're going to be a lot more successful and get better results by having that. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's just so simple and it's not a part of the conversation around gut health that normally people are, um, having opportunities to jump into. And so it becomes instead of For example, instead of my why and me being able to really connect to it and remain motivated to reach the thing that I know I need and want in order to stop hiding or missing out on my life, it becomes this like, I have to do this because my doctor said I had to. You're white knuckling it, right? Mm -hmm. You're white knuckling it. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't feel good to anybody. And I think part of the problem must be that a lot of times we don't even realize that that's what happens. Mm -hmm. We don't realize how abnormal it is, for example, to go into our doctor saying, hey, I don't feel good. Can you check X, Y, and Z? Have something come up that can be dealt with and have your doctor say, no, we don't need to worry about that. 
And then we just think, well, I can't question this person who's somehow viewed as above me, better than, knows more than. Superior, yes. Mm -hmm. And so we just continue to suffer. We just continue to stay missing out on life and unable to really shine into why we're here, why we're here. Mm -hmm. Or I'll say it even, even worse would be unable to get connected to understand our why. Because I know, if, I mean, a lot of people are probably still at this point in the conversation thinking to themselves, I don't have a freaking clue what my reason mm. is. I don't know what my gift is. I don't know what I bring into this life. Like, I feel so miserable and sick. You're out of your freaking minds, girls. Like, I don't know mm. what, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm so disconnected from that. So if that is yeah. you, you know, yeah, of course, of course you feel that way. So I, I don't, maybe this conversation sparks something for you and, and allows you to know that even if it's not, if it's not something you're aware of, it doesn't mean it's not there. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And maybe Katie asking the why, the why, the why, the why will help bring something up for you. Yeah. And I think also it, if you are in that space where you're really disconnected with that, spending some time, you know, this, this can take months for people yeah. to figure out. Mm. It's, it's not something that I expect people to get complete clarity on by the end of this conversation, right? Mm. It's something, That's important. yeah, mm-hmm. spend some time just brain dumping. Think back. I actually was working on um, a training for my group where I was thinking back to when we were kids and we imagined, right? We imagined what our lives would look like. And we stop imagining and we're just so duty bound that we are in reality. My little sister, you guys, whenever we were little, so she was four years younger than me, she wanted to be a lion when she grew up. (laughs) And I would get so mad at her because I was like, Danny, you can't, you can't do that. Like you can't be a lion when you grow up, you're a human. My mom told me I could be whatever I want to be when I grow up. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I want but to be no. a lion too, Danny. Oh, me too. That is so sweet. <laughs> so like, but where did where did our imaginations go? They're out of practice and they're like a muscle, right? So play with it. Like sit there and imagine. What did you imagine being whenever you were a kid? Because a lot of the time when we're kids, um, you know, there are exceptions if you were in a really traumatic, you know, childhood, stuff like that. But if you were in a safe childhood growing up, you were a lot more in touch with yourself and your gifts and your abilities and your unique interests and likes. So what did you dream about being or doing as a kid? How did you imagine showing up whenever you were a grown up? And you can, that can help prompt you into, you know, I mean, if you dreamt of being a lion, I'm not really Mm -hmm. sure. Maybe you wanted to be (laughs) something really fierce and strong. (laughs) I think it was just because the Lion King had just come out. (laughs) Oh, that's it. God. We nailed it. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. But it can Simba really 2.0. Prompt. Simba 2.0. It can help prompt, you know, those thoughts and, and those ideas of, of what your purpose and gifts and abilities are. If you're, if you're really stuck or feel like you don't know. Also following this conversation, I would love for you to clarify, because I think we've, we've done a lot of defining it and and talking about it in in multiple different ways but i'm sure there are as kylie mentioned there's could probably still be some people who feel disconnected and i want you to highlight the importance like why would somebody take this approach what is the benefit to them in taking this approach as opposed to maybe just doing what you mentioned earlier and taking the action to find the right practitioner, but then letting the practitioner kind of take things from there and that's it. What is the benefit that somebody would have to add in this extra stuff that probably feels so hard for a Yeah, and it's, Kylie said a minute ago that it's so easy and it is very easy. It's very, or it's very simple. It's very simple, but it's not easy, right? It's right. hard to do this work. Um, yeah. I totally flipped that, but that's okay. It's very simple, mm-hmm. but not easy. So- Doing that, that you just said, Meg, is fine for some people, you know, for some people, it's going to be fine. They're going to go to an expert, they're going to do what they said they were going to do. And, you know, get the results. And I found like, especially men, 
are really good at this. Like they are great Mm. at sticking with protocols. Tell me what to do. I'm going to go do it and keep going, you know, on my merry way. I love working with guys because they're so simple. <laughs> like they're just like straightforward. There's not as much black and white stuff. Yeah, just, they're very like, simple creatures. Very <laughs> sweet little things. Um, <laughs> Bless their soul. <laughs> Bless their soul. <laughs> um, but if, if you find yourself jumping around from expert to expert and never feeling happy with any of them or you feel like you've wasted so much time and money on different protocols and experts and things, and you're never getting results. And really it's because you're not showing up and doing the work where you start diets and you're not able to stick Mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Um, Those can be hard things, you guys, too, to like admit that you're the one responsible for your results instead of blaming it on someone else, but victims never win, right? Like, well, we want you to win. So we don't want you to be the victim. Like we want you to step into this power that is the responsibility for your health and find the freedom with that. So if that sounds more like you, then it would be really worth it to pump the brakes for a minute on the doing. I get Mm -hmm. so many questions. Just tell me what to do. Just tell me what to do. And that's easier because you're relying on me to find the answers for you, you know, Mm -hmm. and then you just go thoughtlessly do it. And yeah, what I'm asking you to do is not easy and it's hard and it takes a lot of work and a lot of digging and it can be emotional, but it's going to get you more long lasting, sustainable results that feel more natural to you because another, so another option that can happen is either you're jumping around from protocol and expert to expert, not getting results or you get great results but your protocol is so restrictive and your diet has to be super rigid in order to maintain them. But instead of being a slave or hiding behind your IBS symptoms, you become a slave or hide behind the strict nutrition plan or supplement plan. You're still not able to go to restaurants with people. You're still not able to go to friends' mm-hmm. houses for dinner because you have to do this perfect formula to maintain your results or not have a flare in your symptoms. And that's not something you're willing to do, or that's not something you want to do. And then you're frustrated because you don't know how to go forward from that. Those are kind of the two extremes that I see. It's a different version of the same thing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think that there's something to be said. I mean, I know all three of us use a lot of different, like elimination diets come into play quite a bit, Mm -hmm. but we say this also all the time, an elimination diet, you guys are hearing this and thinking, oh, but that's what I'm doing and it's helping and I feel really good about it. Perfect. Fine. There is a purpose for them. Like, don't take that as you're doing something wrong and you're still just hiding unless you are, right? Maybe Mm -hmm. ask yourself, like, are you getting better? Are you dealing Mm -hmm. with the underlying things or are you allowing this to be the, uh, the control piece where you find some comfort because you feel in control? And Katie, Mm -hmm. uh, I, we all know too how connected the gut and our gut symptoms are to the state of our and the well being of our mind. Mm-hmm. You don't have to necessarily feel stressed to have your brain be perceiving stress. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, take a look at that. Ask yourself if you've had any sort of traumatic events, PTSD, abuse, et cetera, in the past. And like maybe you'd start from that angle. Katie, right? How often do you tell people? maybe it's not that you start with the gut. You might be having gut issues, but maybe you start at the other end. You start with the mental side of things, the brain, Mm -hmm. and you allow things to take the edge off from that end. Mm -hmm. And then you said, right, but this, uh, you wouldn't be able to come to that conclusion. I'm guessing from what you're saying without asking yourself why, understanding what it is you need, understanding Mm -hmm. where the voids are and where you need to get the help. And then deciding when it is that you're ready to do that. I think that is also a part of what you're saying that I really appreciate. I know I I mentioned this several times, but Meg, when we had Selena on, -hmm. one of the things that she mentioned was you can know you have to do something and still choose not to do it. There's power in that. Your decision can be, I'm choosing nothing right now. Mm -hmm. I know what I need to do and I'm going to choose to do it later. But you find that to be pretty empowering, right? Because it's clear. 
to your point, Katie, it's a vision. It's a clear vision. You know what it is. It doesn't mean that you have to decide yes today, right? Yeah. Yeah. And knowing where all of those gaps are, knowing all of the things that you want to put in motion, like pick one, pick one or two, and then parking lot the rest. And just because like you were saying, Kylie, just because you're choosing not to take action on something today doesn't mean you never will, doesn't mean it's not important to you. It's just, you don't have maybe the emotional or mental bandwidth to take it on right now. You don't have the time, you don't have the resources. Something else is more important or a bigger priority to you and that's okay. But it's about that awareness and that power of choosing versus living in default and letting life just happen to you. Oh my gosh. That was a perfect way to sum it all up right there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I have so many more questions, but in the interest of time, because we have been trying to shorten our episodes a little bit because we can go on forever. And as much as I'm sure our audience would just love to hear us chat forever and ever and ever and ever, (laughs) ain't nobody got time for that. So Katie, can you tell us where people can find you and tell us about this program that you have? I'm so intrigued by it. Yeah. So it is called Gut Rehab and it's, what I think it perfectly meets people's needs. Um, So if what you heard today, you were like saying yes to, I need that, like this is my jam, that's great because that is the whole first pillar of my gut rehab framework is this brainstorm stage where I'm walking you through all of these questions step-by-step. I have worksheets and we're like doing it right? Where we're asking the guided questions. I even have a visualization that I just made for people to kind of reinforce that feeling connected to that goal. So we have that piece. Um, and there's, it's really support on all levels. It's what I've developed after all my experience of always trying to evolve and best meet people's needs and seeing what works really well and what people need more support on. Um, so yeah, it's, it's awesome. Um, it has a group aspect to it. So you have community because people oftentimes feel really alone and unsupported in this space. Um, and so it has that, it has a one-on-one aspect because gut health is so personalized. I couldn't cut that out. Like I, it's a core component, right? Like, you, it is. like every, yeah. like, uh, it's so you, you have to have the one-on-one stuff. Um, and then there's also a pre-recorded course component where you're going through and listening to things that you really need to listen to, think on, take action on, and then you bring that knowledge that you've gained into our one-on-one session. So we're starting more from the same level instead of me trying to catch you up and educate you, you're already there. So then we can really like implement, dive in, see where you're getting stuck and make better use of our time. So we've got all that. We've got the functional testing. I normally do, you know, functional stool tests on everyone um, that's coming in. We've got journal support, messaging support. It's just, it's pretty robust with everything. So got that. If you're interested in that, I do require, just like we said, you know, you're vetting the experts, the experts are vetting you. So I require that process before working with anyone. So you can schedule a free nourished clarity call on my website. I think I'll put it in the show notes, but it's nourished thrive or nourished thrive Um, and, um, you can schedule that. You can find me on Instagram at the underscore healthy gut underscore dietitian. And I think by the time that this comes out, my podcast will be out. So that's yes, exciting. It will. Let's I talk hope, about that. Yeah. So I hope you guys will come be guests on my show. Maybe we can do part two <laughs> over on my, on my space. Oh, Remember my space? I think I could speak for both of us. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Oh God. Yeah. Uh, we would be thrilled. When are we coming? What day, what time, what know, are we wearing? I know let's schedule it. So yeah, I just got it up yesterday, the very first episode. So um, I've got, yeah, it's going to be kind of a combination of solo episodes and guests. So, nice. um, and what is yeah. it called? It's that's why I said my web address wrong. It's the nourished and thriving show. So, Oh, oh I love yeah, that. I name. love it. Thank you. Oh, Thank I God. listened to, to the first episode yesterday while I was cooking something and I was like, oh, this is my friend. What is going on? I was like starstruck for me. I'm blushing. <laughs> Katie, so, oh. thank you. I 
right. This is what I'm going to answer another gift for Katie. And I, you'll, we all <laughs> heard it here. There's just so much soul and there's so much genuine care for the people who are around you. Even in this conversation, it was even to us, there was just so much care taken. And I, I know this because I know you, but I imagine that your patients, whether they can find the words to say that or not, get this and feel this from you as well. So if you are one of those people who really requires a deep sort of soulful nourishment when you're trying to heal or, you know, like me at baseline for like humans in your life, then this is a really, this is, this is a good match and you should consider following, reaching out because it's, there's, Oh, it's a delicate balance, isn't it, guys? It's a delicate mm-hmm. balance between that holding space idea and that like kick in the ass. And it's both. Both are needed. It's both. Yes. Both. <laughs> so thank Absolutely. you for being thank you. just perfectly you and bringing this information and just the general theme of our conversation. That's a special kind of conversation. This is a nuanced idea and not everybody even knows that this is something that they could be using to help themselves. And the Mm -hmm. step-by-step process that you spelled out was just really helpful. So helpful. Thank you for being here with us. We love you. Yes. Thank you guys so so much much, for having me. Thank you so much. Enjoyed it. Bye, Bye, Katie. Bye.